Uh, welcome again to all the classic car enthusiasts. Um, I just want to do a quick video. I did one this morning on this uh, finishing off this gantry and a little bit on the E type, but I just thought I'd pop this one up. Um, I won't stand in the way of this light. Um, and what it is, is I've had a, a, a few requests over the years. Uh, I made this uh, bonnet jig, oh, I guess about five years ago, and what it was, I was working pretty much on my own. And this is an extremely difficult bonnet, you know, it's, it's more than a third of the car length and it's very difficult to work with because you need three people to lift it, one on each arch and one on the front. And, and so I couldn't, the only way I could see working on my own with it was, was to make something that would rotate where I could take the parts off. So I'll go through it um, and I'll uh, give you the basic dimensions and, 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 and you can see, there's other places to fit it but it'll give you the basic dimensions and a few measurements in centimetres and uh, and then you can go from there and if you've got any other questions you know uh, let me know. Um, the two guys particularly that asked me for this was um, uh, Stuart and Tony and I've had a few requests over the years about it where people have seen it uh, and I have passed on some stuff um, and I did do a video on it but I can't remember what it's called it's such a long time ago and I've done so many videos. Anyway so uh, for Stuart and Tony I'll, I'll show you this but before we do that um, I just want to give a, a quick shout out for the, for the mini guys. Uh, you know, there's so many mini channels at the moment, which is really good news. And not everybody's doing uh, different things. Even people are going over the same things, but they're showing different methods. And I think it's really uh, good, you know, because uh, you can learn so much from this. There's little things, little tips. People put something, uh, a, a point a certain way, or, or take something apart a certain way. You think, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And you can use their ideas, or you can or you can get ideas of your own and, and, and just make the whole thing better. But it's great that we share it as a community because everybody gets a chance to do this work and, and, and you know and not take it to a garage. If people don't have the money to do it or even if they do they want to do it themselves and probably do a better job sometimes. So I want to do a few shout outs because there's a lot of guys out there doing it and they and it'd be good if uh, everybody could get around and, and have a look at their channel. So the first one is um, George Knapp. And I want to say thank you to George because he took me around the Haynes Motor Museum in Somerset and uh, he gave me some dolly wheels and actually a, a, another thing, it's uh, from British Rail, part of a rail, which is nice. Um, thanks for that George and, and hi to your family. Um, Paul P who's doing uh, a mini build where he's doing uh, um, uh, an uh, oil uh, lifted suspension, pneumatic suspension, which is very clever. Um, there's another guy who's just started, well I don't know how long he's been started, but it's called Mad Mini Vlogger. But it's Mad in, with double D, M-A-double-D Mini Vlogger. And he's doing some, some stuff, you should have a look in at that. Uh, Mini Matt TV is another good one. Uh, Sean C, who's doing a lot of body work now and he's got this uh, new jig. He's doing classic mini restoration. Uh, DB Mini DIY, uh, another one he's doing. Lots of stuff with, with calipers and, well, basically rebuilding the car. And he's working with one bad arm, so God knows how he gets on. And lastly, even though George doesn't need a shout out from me, I mean, I have 1,600 or something uh, subscribers, which I'm more than happy with. Um, and he has about 4,000, but this, the, the channel is brilliant. It's called Soup. Uh, it's George Corrales is his name. He does brilliant videos. They're, they're, they're on a par and as good as uh, Bad Obsession Motorsport. He's not a fabricator that, like they are, but, he, but the way he's produced them uh, are absolutely stunning. They're, they're, it's like TV. It's so, so professional. And you should look at that suit, George Carellis, really top guy. Um, and, and, and just like the rest of us all trying to do something. So I think he's on episode 14 now, but it's called Soup. Terrific. Uh, it's, as, it's as well laid out as a Project Binky, who we all love, I'm sure everybody loves a bad obsession, you can see by the amount of subs they have, the amount of views. Anyway, so I just wanted to mention those, those guys, so have a, have a look around uh, and, uh, and see what everybody's up to. So to quickly go over this, um, so what I'll do is, is I'll go over it and then you can rewind the video and, and uh, you can take some of these measurements. So basically across the bonnet, I'll take some quick measurements and I'll take across the bonnet, so this one is it's going from basically from where the, the bonnet um, uh, clamps are that clamp down over uh, where, where the, um, 
they've got like a rubber centralizer or a pointer which is on the, the bulkhead of the car and this actually um, um, puts it in the, in, the, in the right direction if you like, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, anyway, it'll come to me. So this, this measurement across here is 158, 158 across the bay, so across the bottom. And these on the side are, you, you don't need to make them as big as this. These particular ones are 121, but as you can see, they're sticking out a bit. Uh, it, it doesn't need to be cleaned up any better than that. So 121, what do we say? Uh, 150, what is it? 150. 158 across the bottom. So that's the main one. The axle itself is, is uh, let me have a look. The axle itself is two meters exactly. Two meters across there. Now I've got it, I've got it positioned with four bolts. So there's two there on the air box, there's two there on the air box, and I'll pick the camera up and show you. And there's two here on each. Uh, side mounting, where, as I say, where the bonnet locks. Um, it's a sorry, it's a centralising pin. It's to centralise the bonnet when it goes down. <clears throat> There's a couple of things uh, that need to be done to this to allow you to take everything off. Um, it's basically just uh, there's a piece to go from here, and you take this security second security latch off, and you put one from here onto here, so that when you take the wings off and the inner parts, uh, the 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 uh, lower um, front of the of the bonnet um, I think I, I think I said called it a uh, skull but it's actually the lower tub of it and then you all you end up with then is is just the two air boxes and the centerpiece and it's very easy to, to, to take that off if you need to the reason I made it this particular height was is I was working on my own and I had the bonnet stood up on its end on wood and then this is how I produced it and initially I had this as tubing but it's very difficult then to get it on and off, so I came up with this idea of using, making hinges and we just grease them up and I put bolts through them, but I'll show you that in a second. And you can see when I rotate it, I can just take this pin out, it's very easy for me to rotate the hole, oh, you, didn't know it. you can see it's very, very easy to rotate, I can put, I put it just about in any position I want. And I'll do some measurements on the side. So the length of it, again, you don't have to make it the same way. You can make it exactly how you, how you, how you want. It's no, uh, you know, it's what, what you're comfortable with. I would suggest if you don't have a lot of room, it's 199 from one side of this to the other. 199. And I think the base is. I'll just check the base. And the base is uh, uh, 147, so the base across is 147. I just made it triangular and put some gussets in the side, but I'll pick the camera up and show you that. Um, but there's many different ways you could do it, but I found this was the easiest to, to, uh, to, to get it to set it up in the first place. Um, and like I say, make, if you can, make the hinges open. It's easier to put it on and take it off. Also, the reason I mounted it here was when, when I put the bolts in uh, for the painting, I used these little uh, sponge circular pads against it so that the paint is not damaged as you bolt it in, so you've got a cushion against it. But I'll put the camera up and I'll show you what, we, what, uh, what I mean. So uh, you can see here I've got the arm on it now, and I have another piece which goes through there which bolts and it just locks it. But it's just it's a real basic lock, but it does the job. You can see there, there's the hinge. It's just an old, an old hinge that I've just tacked on the side. But it's enough to hold it together there, because then you can actually slide the whole thing out. If you have it open like this, and we did the very first one, I did the Mark I version, and it, this piece here caught the corner, and it nearly came out. So this is why I made them, and it's easy to remove. So, um, and you can see on the side, it's real basic, the gussets on it are real basic. It's just box section. Um, you, I would definitely, if I was doing it again, I would, I would make it so that these box sections here would be boltable because it is a bit big. It looks like I'm gonna run out of time. So, um, okay, take care and bye for now. I'll do a part two.